Duly noted, 7-30-2016. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here on the floor of the Taos Spa in Taos, New Mexico. Uh, this great gym has some amazing equipment, but before I get started, I wanted to work on a little bit of scapulothoracic rhythm. That's the rhythm that the scapula has against the thorax, and uh, this joint is particularly overlooked, and while well, the glenohumeral joint is usually put into play much more, but without the scapulothoracic joint rhythm, the glenohumeral joint action is actually compromised. So one way you can test yourself to see if the scapulothoracic joint is going to be well is a floor slide. So as you put your arms down, keep your shoulder blades underneath you a little bit, keep the elbows down. What you want to be able to see happen is the shoulder blade itself stays relatively depressed until your elbow or your edge of the humerus with the ulna gets to about 90 degrees. And then you should see a healthy hike right through here as the shoulder blade goes up into upward rotation. Uh, the problem most people have, if you look right here on my right side, right there, is that they will jump the gun and they'll start to hike too early like that. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, there's not a lot of room for the supraspinatus tendon to move freely between your clavicle and your shoulder blade. And when you hike early, it's like cheese grater on the supraspinatus. This is the most common damaged rotator cuff tendon. This will throw off scapulothoracic rhythm and then glenohumeral joint rhythm. So as you get on the floor, really practice trying to keep this area depressed and try to raise upwards, really trying to feel almost a stretch through here and then as the elbow comes upwards towards a 90 degree angle, then the shoulder blade should hike. As you start to work on the floor, then you can sit up and do the same thing. If you feel like you're hiking too much, a way to correct yourself in the very beginning is a walkout. So if you span outwards for me, um, what you can do is take your left ear to your left shoulder on this right side, walk the hand downwards, and that will depress the shoulder blade. And then just bring the left ear to the left shoulder to mobilize the neck portion of the inner scapula and trapezius. And as you go back to center, remember that feeling of almost stretch that you experience with levator scapula and trapezius and try to maintain that as the elbows get to 90. And you'll notice that you'll start hiking a lot less. And that improves the force couple relationship between uh, levator scapula, rhomboid, serratus anterior, and the trapezius muscle. As you sit upwards, you can actually move that and practice the same thing by not letting yourself hike too early. And again, I'll show you a pathological hike on this side. If you watch the early hike, right there, you can fix that by just trying to maintain that feeling you got on the walkout. And as you go up above 90, there's a normal hike that happens. Uh, this can help prevent a lot of rotator cuff pathology, and it can also improve scapulothoracic rhythm, the scapula uh, joint that it makes with the thorax and the rib cage. Uh, this is a mostly muscular joint, so it's under your motor control, and you're going to be the one that has to change this rhythm. Uh, there won't be any fancy adjustments. It's going to have to be you improving your motor control. If you need some soft tissue therapies to help coordinate these tissues because some are overactive, make sure to see a manual therapist to help you out. Otherwise, try these tricks, and they may just improve your groove on scapulothoracic rhythm. Dr. Kathy Dooley, I'll see you next time.